My name is Tanika Neva and I'm a reporter covering criminal justice, politics, homelessness, reproductive justice. I've written for The Washington Post, Rolling Stone, Gothamist. When Obama got elected, that was my first year working in journalism. And I remember I was with my coworkers on election night and I gave my boss a big hug and I said thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to work in journalism during this momentous historic occasion and his reaction was Ugh, okay whatever I think he was like older and cynical about politics at that point for a while my main beat was homelessness which is a tough one it's very hard to make people care about that traffic was always an issue it was always an issue that we can pay writers as much as it takes for somebody to really report a story in the way that creates good journalism. One of the major problems with that is that it does encourage low pay in journalism. It does encourage people to have screaming hot takes instead of really know a topic and do reporting. I feel really strongly about doing reporting because I've never done a story where doing a bunch of reporting didn't make me change my mind on something. And you know, I always kind of like lazily start out thinking, oh, I know about this. I'll just write an opinion piece. I'm an expert now. But then I said, oh, you know, maybe I'm not right about this. Maybe I should talk to an actual expert. Maybe I should talk to somebody that's been affected by this issue every single time. That story changes because I learned something new from someone. And I think this sense that people have, especially younger people, where, you know, all this brilliance will gush forth from their brain because they know everything already at the age of 25 is not great for journalism. Realistically, uh, writing a listicle headlined the 10 craziest reasons you should be petrified of Sarah Palin trafficked a lot more than I'm gonna you know interview homeless people on the street and take six months to write a you know 5,000 word feature that only my mom reads. I don't scoff at packaging content in a way that makes people want to read and share it. I do think it goes too far when traffic considerations obfuscate truth or spread miscommunication because, you know, as anyone that's worked in any kind of media knows, the correction never goes as viral as the original wrong story. I think one of the most absurd patterns of the election was he would say something crazy, everyone who gets paid too much money to be a pundit would say it's the end of his political career, and then it would just make him stronger in the polls. You know, we do live in a world where a lot of people have been watching Fox News for a decade. Why would somebody who would already would be prone to xenophobic viewpoints be suddenly outraged because Donald Trump said something offensive about women? It just never sort of ceased to amaze me that many people in media kept getting taken aback and shocked that his career, political career kept not being over. It's really, really important for journalists to go to experts, go to people that have been affected by an issue, you know, if fiscally, if financially possible, go to a place and talk to people, as many people as possible, uh, not just the ones that are gonna get the grabby headlines. There's a lot to learn from other people's stories.